sometimes these days it can seem like you have to shout the loudest, wear the brightest colours, or look the wildest in order to get attention. But for me, sometimes subtle can stand out even more. And this is a perfect example. Narrow body, just the single exhaust, Grigio Scuro paint, yellow fogs, and a ducktail. Subtle, but absolutely stunning, and hiding quite the flat six. There's a good chance you haven't heard of Workshop 5001, and perhaps that's part of the appeal, but I think they might just create the coolest resto mod Porsches on the planet. This is Marlon Goldberg, the straight-talking font of Porsche knowledge behind the business, which is based in a small resto mod of a mid-century workshop in LA. Maybe I'm kind of a purist at heart, you know. I, I think hot rodding is kind of a California thing, and I, I grew up in New York where I feel like Porsche collectors there are more focused on originality and, uh, and, and preserving value. So it's all about having like an original 73 RS or an original S and not necessarily modifying the car. So I, I was kind of fascinated by what people were doing with the cars out here, but I, I don't like these look at me hot rods with too many stickers and goofy things going on. I want a car that looks very stock and original, but is maybe a wolf in sheep's clothing. Talking of subtle, I'm just going to mention in an offhand, conversational sort of way that you might like to have a look at the Haggerty Drivers Club. I only suggest it because the magazine is rather good and unlimited access to the valuation tool might come in handy. No pressure, but just clicking on the link down below would be a really nice, subtle way to show your support. Now, a quick history recap. The 964 RS was launched in 1992 and was born out of the cars used in the first ever Carrera Cup. It had a 3.6 litre engine putting out 256 brake horsepower. Then there was the RS America which was, surprise surprise, built for the US market. It got a wing but only had the 247 brake horsepower engine from the Carrera 2. The wildest 964 RS was the very rare 3.8 which had the bulging turbo body and 300 brake horsepower. But this has over 25% more power, hauling just 1,200 kilos, and is described by Marlon as a sort of 964 RS++. plus plus. The way this car flows up here is just fabulous. It's got all the grip you could want, but still feels like an old 911, which means at any speed it's involving. <laughs> Turn in here, get the nose in. <laughs> the way a 911 slides is still very special. I adore the narrow body look and also the way it just slots down a road like this. A beautiful, magical road like this. This might have bigger wheels, front and rear, so eights on the front, nine and a half in the rear, but it's a 225 section tyre on the front, 255 on the rear. Yes, they're quite sticky, these Bridgestones, but they still let the car move around. All oh, those lovely old 911 traits dripping from the driving experience. The suspension is a mix of genuine 964 RS parts for things like the uprights, but then attached to the finest offerings from KW. These are the latest motorsport dampers found in a GT4 Cup car and also utilised by Manti Racing. It's the sort of suspension that goes about its work so seamlessly that it almost takes you a while to notice just how good it is. What it's not getting unsettled by. The fuss it's not making, despite a ride height 10mm lower, even than an RS. You get in it and it still feels 
like a 964 RS in terms of that really tough sort of underlying ride quality but then as soon as you hit some rougher road it just soaks it up beautifully fully rose jointed so the precision in it is just spellbinding not that I've been using more than about half the ratios today but we've got the six-speed box from a 993 in here this 3.9 litre engine it has 385 brake horsepower it's losing about five brake horsepower because it's got the single exit exhaust rather than the dual exit but I love that single exit look torque is 300 pounds foot and it has this wonderful depth to it that makes this flat six feel strong rather than highly strung Marlin's speciality is engine building and it shows. It's not an engine that you ever feel afraid of absolutely ripping. So much urgency, low down as well as high up at the rev range and you pitch it into a corner like this. Just feel that rear move around, get the nose in, get it dancing. A beautiful blend of grip, just a little bit of slip on a road like this. One of the things I remember from the earlier build, which is a totally different engine, but it feels so strong, but so smooth. And it sounds glorious. There's actually a reasonable amount of sound deadening in here. So it's just this mellow, mellifluous sound. One thing I'd change about this car, I think you probably guess it, it's these seats. They're Recaro podiums and whilst they're fantastic to sit in, as you would expect from Recaros, they're just uh, not quite in keeping enough, I think, for me. If it were mine, I'd probably go for some older style, subtler Recaro pole positions, such as the joy of a bespoke build that the choice is yours. And you can get really detailed, right down to matching the colour of the Porsche script on the brake calipers to match the rest of the car. As such, the price is as vague as a very, very expensive piece of string. It's also why Mullen does plenty of projects where he just builds an engine for an existing car. But if I had the money... Straight deep in, get the nose in. Here, you can almost feel the front wheel just pick up through that heavily cambered corner there. There's no power assistance in this steering. So just like a Euro spec 964 RS, the UK cars did actually get power steering, the right-hand drive cars, but this has no power assistance and I'm kind of glad it just adds to the toughness you feel in this. Oh, I love sliding it through there remains precise. It's got the limited zip diff from a 993RS. Just in case you can't tell, I'll spell it out for you. I love this car. It might not be one that would instantly jump out on Instagram, or even if you just passed it in the street. The little carbon fibre ducktail being really the only sort of showy thing about it. It does actually have a carbon fibre roof as well, replacing the sunroof panel that was there. But although plenty would walk straight past this in the street, you just assume it was a lovely old 911. I think it's all the better for it. I think it's beautiful. I think the way it drives is beautiful. No two cars from Workshop 5001 are the same, and I'm not sure exactly what I'd ask them to build me if I won the lottery. But whether a 60s short wheelbase, a 70s RS, or something from the 90s, I know it would be fastidiously executed, have a glorious engine, and be stunning in a wonderfully subtle way.